You know Emirates, and you might have heard of Fly Dubai, but did you know they are siblings with the same owner, but vastly different business models? While Emirates offers expensive glamour, Fly Dubai offers expensive low cost? They're either an insane ripoff or a huge gift, depending on how you look at it. But one thing is for sure, they offer an experience unlike any other airline in the world. A confused experience with some high highs and low lows. So let's see what I mean. If you're new here, you might think, why listen to me? Who is this random dude? I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Swede and half American who has been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past eight years, I've been lucky to call reviewing airlines my full-time job, and in that time, I've flown 150 different airlines, always self-funded. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you guys have an amazing trip after following my advice. So I hope this video helps you with your choices. What even is Fly Dubai? They're a low cost, narrow body airline based in, you guessed it, Dubai. Founded in 2008 with their first delivery in 2009, they're much younger than Emirates, but they mostly serve a completely different market segment, namely routes to secondary cities in Asia, capitals in Eastern Europe, and tons of cities in Russia. They also, for whatever reason, compete head to head with Emirates on some routes and flight times, which I can't make sense of. Today, I'm flying one of those routes from Istanbul to Dubai. So let's check it out. Welcome to Istanbul Sabiha Gökçen Airport, the secondary airport in the city and the only one on the Asian side. This airport is primarily used for low-cost carriers, but a few full-service airlines offer flights here, including Qatar Airways and, of course, Fly Dubai. At check-in two hours prior to departure, I'm the only passenger in business class. Not bad in a cabin with 10 seats, even if I'd upgraded just a few days prior. I speed through security and immigration thanks to Fast Track and head to the Plaza Premium Lounge, where I spend some time plane spotting before heading to my gate. On most airlines, when you upgrade after check, you don't get the ground experience of the cabin you've upgraded to. So this is a very nice surprise. I'm on board today's flight for no other reason than an enormous desire to finally try Fly Dubai. It's like wanting to put a face to a name, you know? I booked this trip and three days later, here I am. Fly Dubai is a fleet consisting of exclusively 737s with select 737 MAX aircraft featuring lie flat seats in business class. I'll show you how to tell if your flight has lie flat seats or not in a second, but now there are a total of 10 business class seats on board spread across three rows. Yes, you're seeing that right. The second row is like a completely different experience from the first and the third. Since I was the only passenger, well, at least initially, I had free reign and chose seat 2 Bravo. Once boarding is completed, as you'll see, 8 out of 10 seats are taken, mainly due to free upgrades. Now, row 2 is vastly superior for day flights, but as you'll see, row 1 is absolutely the place to be on night flights. Let me show you what I mean as we get on board after I quickly mention how I knew this flight had live flat seats. The easiest and surprisingly trustworthy way to find out is to search Google Flights. If you put your cabin as business class, it'll show if the seat type is a live flat or a recliner. The aircraft can, of course, change though, and changes sadly happen quite often with Fly Dubai from what I hear, but at least this will increase your odds. So, welcome on board. There's some hold up at the gate after I board, so I somehow have a full minute to myself in this beautiful cabin. Economy looks quite nice down the back, doesn't it? My goodness, I have to say I am blown away. What a fresh, modern design paired perfectly with some calming boarding music. I've just flown Turkish Airlines' new 787 business class, and this feels luxurious in comparison. Who'd have thought? Now, yes, there is a big difference between my seat, the other throne seat, and the rest of the seats. I settle in and I'm immediately impressed by how high the seatbacks are. These are some of the highest seatbacks I've ever seen, even higher than on many long haul aircraft. The privacy here is remarkable and if this seat had doors, it would rival some of the best in the industry in that aspect. My throne seat also rivals the best in the industry when it comes to storage. Not only do you have these two huge surfaces, you also have this closet and another even bigger storage bin below you on the other side. This seat has storage galore. To be fair, on both the privacy and the storage front, the odd-numbered rows are drastically inferior, offering virtually no privacy or storage. Besides that, you have your usual charging, headphone jack, a reading light, and a nice headphone hook, as well as your seat controls and a remote down here. Your tray table also extends from this area. This is a well-designed seat, but it has one drawback that takes it from a 10 to a 5 that I'll make sure to share in flight. 
As I settle in, I'm so excited to experience the pre-departure service. Boarding eventually completes and we start pushed back. At this point, I'm wondering what's going on. A quick Google tells me there is no pre-departure service on Fly Dubai. That is a shame, but as you'll see, the drink menu is insanely bare bones, so there's nothing exciting to serve pre-departure anyway. So the adorable Fly Dubai safety video plays and the crew comes by to do their checks, very deliberately not collecting this plastic for some reason. That's fine, I'm mainly curious about the in-flight experience, so let's head to Dubai. But not before I point out that I am so close to reaching 737k subscribers. Will you help me reach that awesome number if you haven't already subscribed by hitting that button below? Our flight time down to Dubai is only four hours today, but that doesn't mean this screen won't come in handy. Emirates has among the best entertainment systems in the world, so is that reflected on Fly Dubai? No, not in the least. The movie selection is quite good. Here's the comedy section to give you an idea, and they have an entire Israeli movie category, which is interesting, but the TV show selection is meager. I'm really struggling to place Fly Dubai because their seats are so good that it's impossible to consider them low cost and their prices are definitely too high for that title but all the other parts of the experience feel decidedly low cost as you'll see at least these headphones are really great. In terms of connectivity, which is an in-flight must these days, Fly Dubai doesn't offer it on all their aircraft, including this two-year-old 737 MAX, which makes absolutely no sense. Along those lines of things you could expect on a four-hour plus international business class flight, there are also no amenities on board at all. I mean, even the lavatory doesn't have any amenities besides this air freshener. The 737 MAX lavatories also need no further comment. What do you think is the fastest growing crime in the US? Today's video sponsor has two words, identity theft. Every 14 seconds, someone's data is stolen, meaning that since this video started, dozens of people have already been impacted. Good case scenario, your data is sold to telemarketers and scam centers who pester you. Bad case scenario, they get your credit score and start applying for credit cards and loans in your name. This is becoming incredibly common and suddenly there can be tens of thousands of dollars of debt in your name with no one else tied to it. Thank goodness for Aura. An online safety tool that seeks to provide a safer online environment with an all-in-one package. This includes features that are critical to staying safe while traveling, like identity and financial monitoring, one-click credit lock, antivirus protection for all your devices, and identity theft protection up to $1 million. Aura is the easiest way to protect against identity theft at Aura.com slash non-stop-dan. You can click that link at the top of the description now and save it for later because seriously, just by going to that link, you'll get Aura for free for 14 days, which lets you see how much of your personal information is out there. They literally scan the whole internet for it and you immediately get the $1 million identity theft insurance. You're protected as soon as you sign up. Once again, give it a try. That's aura.com slash nonstop Dan. So the best thing about this seat is without a doubt that it turns into a bed, right? Well, I'd say that's the best thing about the seats in the first row. Just check out this footrest. Meanwhile, in these throne seats, the footwell is about the size of a shoebox. Unless your feet are like Pinocchio's nose in reverse, you simply won't have space to move around here. It feels like trying to sleep in a coffin, but even those must be more spacious. If you're looking to sleep, choose the first row. The bedding is decent though, but note the blankets are only provided on request. One thing is for sure, you won't be too hot here with not one, not two, but three individual air vents of your own. If that's not opulence, I don't know what is. Upon boarding, I initially found the crew friendly but my goodness, they decided not to be friendly in flight today. The purser doesn't say a word to anyone, just walks around with a frown and responds to requests with, okay. Perhaps she expected an empty cabin just like me, and even I paid basically nothing for my upgrade, so I guess we don't deserve luxury service. She hands out hot towels without a word, but I take this opportunity to see if she'll finally collect my plastic. That does the trick. Then she passes out the menus, explaining that the choices will be limited due to the number of free upgrades. 
Okay. The food menu is quite good for a flight this length, with three choices for mains, while the drink menu is the saddest I've seen on any Middle Eastern airline. Even worse than Egypt Air, which says a lot. An hour after takeoff, the first and only service of the flight is provided when my meal is plonked down all on one tray without a word. To be honest, this might not look great, but wow. I'm in my eggplant era since early 2022 and this moussaka is perfection. I wish it contained some protein, but I genuinely like this whole meal. The portion is also good for a flight this length, but yeah, the presentation is quite a drawback. I also order some green tea, which is served with a merci, my little way of saying thanks, merci for being you and subscribing. The rest of the flight is spent working, writing this script to be exact, while the purser turns off all the lights and disappears to never be seen again. Doesn't that warm glow from economy look so appealing? Before landing, I ask for some snacks, and to my positive surprise, the flight attendant brings me this enormous selection, which is really nice. As we approach Dubai, I watch some Friends Season 5, which I can never get enough of as I reflect on Fly Dubai. So what do I think? Now that it's been a while since this flight, I've sort of decided how I feel about Fly Dubai. They are a really interesting airline with stunning cabins on their 737 MAX. And while they're undoubtedly an inferior option compared to Emirates, they operate a ton of routes where an Emirates 777 would never make sense. I would personally be over the moon if Fly Dubai launched flights to the city where I grew up, Gothenburg, because there's no chance Emirates is ever gonna fly there. And given what I paid, I think it's a pretty good deal just considering how good the seat is. The most impressive part I'd say is the privacy and just how fresh the whole cabin feels. Of course, the soft product did leave a lot to be desired, but once again, for a non-stop option to cities with no other choices, I would gladly take Fly Dubai again. One drawback of arriving on Fly Dubai is that they use Terminal 2, which requires buses. That's especially bad if you park close to Terminal 1, like we did, resulting in an almost 15-minute bus ride after the flight. On the positive side, they have business class-only buses, which makes it more comfortable. Why, hello there. This is the point you've all been waiting for. How did I pay for this ticket? And how did I get a good deal on Fly Dubai, which seems impossible? With retail prices like this, it's no wonder they often have 10 out of 10 seats unsold just close to departure. The well-known way to get a far better deal on Fly Dubai Business Class is to upgrade. And the best way to do that is to check Google Flights beforehand by putting nine seats, which is the maximum you can search, of course, marking business class. And then if the flight appears and you're booking at least close to departure, your odds of getting an upgrade or at least of there being upgrade availability is extremely good given that there are only 10 seats in the cab. Immediately after booking, I was able to bid $445, which was the lowest amount possible in the medium category since I still wanted good odds of getting upgraded. But I never actually found out if that bid was accepted because 48 hours prior to the flight, I went online to check in and then I got a banner that appeared saying, upgrade now for just $280. So of course I did that immediately. My bid was canceled. I was able to select seats, a special meal. It was perfect. That means that in total with the economy ticket and the upgrade, the ticket cost me $516, which I think is a pretty good deal for a seat like this on a four hour flight. On that note, until I see you all in my next video very soon, guys, fly safe.